Introduction After heavy rain, the potholes were filled with muddy water. Jack, a 12-year-old inquisitive boy, tried separating the mud from water. Let us see, did he succeed in his project of getting clean water? Jack filled a beaker with muddy water and left it undisturbed for some time. After some time, he was surprised to see the beaker. Let us also look to find the reason for his surprise. The beaker had clear water. Mud being heavy had settled down at the bottom of the beaker while the water formed the upper layer. This process of deposition of mud at the bottom of beaker is called sedimentation and the layer of mud is called the sediment. Jack separated the upper layer of water from the mixture by gently pouring the clear water into another beaker without disturbing the sediment. This process of separation of a liquid from the sediment is called decantation. Similarly, there are other separation methods too. Let us discover them in this module. Children, after preparing tea, this tea stall owner pours the mixture into the tea strainer. The tea passes through the holes of tea strainer, leaving behind the tea leaves in it. This process of separation is known as filtration. Filtration, however, cannot remove the solid substances dissolved in a liquid. Sometimes fine particles of the solid component pass through the strainer that is used as the medium for filtration. In such a situation, filter paper is used. A filter paper is a special paper which has millions of tiny holes in it. While the liquid can pass through these holes, the solid particles remain on the filter paper. The liquid which passes through the filter paper is called the filtrate. The solid particles that are left behind the filter paper are called the residue. Let us do a workout. If you are given a mixture containing water, sand and salt, how will you separate the three components from one another? You will leave the mixture undisturbed for a while to separate sand. Sand, which is heavy and insoluble in water, settles down at the bottom of container. The mixture is then separated by decantation to get sand. Now a salt being soluble is completely dissolved in water. This is done through evaporation and condensation. Let us look what we mean by these two terms. When we have a mixture of salt in water to separate, we take the solution in a kettle and cover it with a lid. Now gently heat the kettle for some time. Heating transforms water into vapor that escapes from the spout of kettle. Continue heating till all the water gets converted into vapor and only salt is left behind in the kettle. Thus salt dissolved in water can be separated from the water through this process. This process of conversion of water into vapor by heating is called evaporation. In order to obtain the water while heating the salt water, hold a plate containing ice just above the spout of the kettle. When the steam escaping through the spout comes in contact with the plate containing ice, it condenses and forms water. This process gives us back the water. This process of conversion of water vapor into water is called condensation. Water is a universal solvent. It dissolves many things. But there are certain items that do not dissolve in water. Collect sand, milk, lemon juice and wax. Also take some sugar and salt. Try to dissolve these materials in water separately. Make a table of your observations. Compare your observation table with the table shown on screen. 
Let us now do another workout. Take a beaker and dissolve some amount of salt in it. Go on adding salt to the solution. As long as the salt is dissolved in water, the solution is an unsaturated solution. But a stage will soon come when you will not be able to dissolve more salt in the solution. At this stage, the solution becomes saturated. Thus, a solution is said to be saturated if it cannot dissolve any more quantity of the given substance in it. Add a small quantity of salt to a saturated solution and heat it. What happens to the undissolved salt at the bottom of the beaker? Yes, it starts dissolving in the solution. Let this hot solution cool. Does the salt reappear to settle at the bottom of the beaker again? Yes, it does. Students, this activity shows that you can dissolve a large quantity of salt in water by heating. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Sedimentation is the process by which the insoluble heavy particles in a liquid are allowed to settle down. Decantation is the process by which a clear liquid obtained after sedimentation is transferred into another container without disturbing the settled particles. Filtration is the process of separating an insoluble solid component of a mixture from its liquid component by passing the mixture through a filter. The process of conversion of water into vapor by heating is called evaporation. The process of conversion of water vapor into water is called condensation. A solution which can dissolve more quantity of a given substance in it is called an unsaturated solution, whereas a solution which cannot do so is said to be saturated.